Broken Games HD is now sponsored by Blue Microphones. Whether you're an experienced content creator or just starting out, Blue Microphones has affordable and quality audio equipment to optimize your setup. Visit bluemic.com. All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is going to be my review for Sony's 2015 Paris Game Week uh, press conference. Now, right off the bat, I want to give Sony uh, credit for two things. They seem to be putting an emphasis and a level of importance on making sure that their first party games um, have betas. And you know, I made a video before that I said, uh, especially with online multiplayer games, I believe all games should have betas. And that's something that the industry across the board has pretty much uh, embraced because you know, it fixes problems before your game reaches the final release, obviously. So I give Sony credit for that. They seem to have a beta for pretty much everything, even games that pretty really don't seem to need it so give them credit for that the second thing i give them credit for and you know i was heckling the the press conference on twitter very heavily because i did have a lot of criticisms criticisms of it which i'm going to get into but one thing um and and my criticisms of the show was really about my preference because one thing i give sony uh you know credit for is even though they a, a lot of the games that they create aren't my pr preference or do not garner my interest right they take chances sometimes it doesn't benefit them but they've never let them let that stop them from taking chances and they have the most diverse genres and subgenres of game there are certain game genres and types that you just won't find anywhere else exclusively because Sony just has this great diversity and variety when it comes to their ex these exclusives they take chances and they embrace different developers uh, ideas and they give their developers a lot of creativity and they give them a lot of choices to come up with something outside of the box when it comes to gaming and not just go with what's safe what's known you know go somewhere other than the beaten path and they do that a lot sometimes it pays off a lot of the times it doesn't but they do it anyway to you know increase the diversity of their catalog and to offer gamers different choices so that's something i just give them credit for like i said even though i'm not interested in half of them but getting into the press conference so uh this is i'm not going to go in any particular order wild the game wild was the most interesting thing in my opinion at the conference um, the gameplay look in, looked interesting it looked unique um, something not exactly that we've played before there are other games that have uh, similarities to it but this game seems to be very unique and this is the game that caught my eye the most I think it was kind of the highlight of the conference the conference and that's definitely a game I'm looking forward uh, to playing so why I believe wild was definitely the highlight uh, as far as new content is shown at least because there's some uh, older games that were announced at E3 they showed a little bit more of but as far as games we really didn't see any gameplay of Wild was definitely the highlight um, Star Wars they showed a little bit of more Star Wars Battlefront villains and heroes uh, I was actually contemplating and trying to make the decision of whether I was actually going to buy Star Wars Battlefront because based on certain things I was thinking about reconsidering but I'm definitely getting Star Wars Battlefront on PC day one Call of Duty zom Zombies, they showed that mode off a little bit. Uh, as we know, PlayStation has some, uh, get some maps first and exclusive content. Uh, this will be the first Call of Duty I actually buy at launch um, since, I don't know, a long time ago, years ago, five years ago. Because yeah, I know I'm not necessarily a fan of Call of Duty or anything like that. But even the last one, I somehow liked it for some reason. So I'm going to give this, uh, this one a chance. Um, even though, like I said, it's it's something completely out of my nature to do. I'm gonna give it a shot, so I'm buying uh, Call of Duty. Uh, it was announced that the Battleborn beta will be coming to PlayStation 4 early next year. Uh, as we know, Battleborn is another Gearbox game, actually very similar to Borderlands. Um, my verdict isn't out on that game. I can't really say I'm excited for that game, even though I'm a huge Borderlands fan. It just seems like a, you know, another version of Borderlands. Um, maybe fleshed out a little bit new features uh different game but it still has the the same dna of borderlands so i can't say that's something i'm looking forward to or definitely going to pick up as of right now um dreams dreams is one of those games where you you wouldn't catch me dead playing that game that's one of the games that i don't know why anybody would have interest in it but you know when i look and read people's comments and uh, in the comment section or on twitter 
there's actually a genuine interest in a game like Dreams. There's, there's a crowd for that. That's one of the things, that's one of the games where I, I see it and I'm like, Sony and Mo Media Molecule, who the hell is buying this? Who wants this? I, you, you couldn't pay me to play a game like that. I don't see the point. But there's a crowd for it and it adds to the diversity of the catalog. So I have absolutely no interest in that game whatsoever. I don't see what's fun in it. It's not my type of game, but that's the type of out of the box experience um, that Media Molecule is known for. I mean, I would play Little Big Planet before I play Dreams, and I definitely would not play Little Big Planet. Um, but apparently, there's a crowd for that. Gran Turismo Sport. So this is the next official Gran Turismo. I wasn't sure if it was like, uh, you know, a spinoff, and they were still making the next Gran Turismo, and Sport was just a spinoff. But no, this is the apparent uh, next official Gran uh, Turismo game. Um, and y'all know I'm not into racing simulators at all. Like, I couldn't care less about them. Uh, I know there's a huge fan base behind Gran Turismo and racing simulators, and people, you know, love love uh, the series. So that's great for them. Um, there's going to be a beta in 2016 uh, for that also. Uh, next, they went into a, f a few VR projects such as Robinson, The Journey, uh, made by Crytek. I know my opinion on Crytek. I don't really see Crytek as necessarily a game development company. I see them as an engine advertisement because all they really do is they, they don't make compelling or great gameplay in my opinion. They just make games that look really good and to advertise their engine and they're still not the most used game engine. But they've decided to work on a VR project called Robinson The Journey. Um, also Until Dawn is getting a VR project called Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Y'all know I'm, I didn't like Until Dawn at all. I think the game was more or less trash. Uh, battle, it was Battlezone VR. Uh, the, as far as VR goes, you know, the PlayStation VR and the virtual reality thing, the only game that interested me was Riggs Mechanized Combat. I think that game looked pretty good. Um, <coughs> later, it was revealed that um, Tekken 7 actually would have VR support also. Uh, Street Fighter V got a release date uh, fe February 2016. I don't remember if they put a specific date. At first, I thought it was a bad date because there's so much content coming out in February and March. It is crazy. Look, like if you look at the list of games, February and March are just ridiculous. But it makes sense because uh, people in the professional fighting game community want like to get these fighting games earlier because, you know, Evo is in June, I believe it is. And, you know, they, they don't like when they only have like a month or a few weeks to play the game uh, before before you know the the huge tournaments come around so they'll have plenty of time to play Street Fighter before the really big fighting game uh, tournament of the year comes around so it makes sense for them and it's good for them um, and they showed Uncharted for multiplayer I made a specific video for that some of you might have uh, seen it if you didn't go go and look at it um, Gravity Rush 2 that's that's a game that wasn't on my radar before but it looks somewhat interesting uh, I would check it out if you know I had the time um, for it uh, depending on its release date but it's a game that looks pretty pretty good and I'll check it out I never played the fr first run uh, the first one don't even know when the first one came out but it looks like a de decent game doesn't look terrible um, Matterfall by House Marquee um, we know they're the, the developers of Rezogun and a few other titles and now they're working on a game called Matterfall uh, just a side note PlayStation, the PlayStation execs use the word console exclusive a lot this press conference. You know, that's not really something a lot of us believe in, but even they even got the execs using this word console exclusive. It's crazy. So they were pretty much said that these games, everything they show you are either console exclusives or full exclusives. Um, so Drive Club, Drive Club Bikes. Now, even though Drive Club got a real bad rep at the beginning when it released, because it released in um, poor fashion, um, th there's a huge community behind, behind Drive Club, believe it or not. And there's some real dedicated fans, and there's a community behind it. Um, the game has gone on to sell a lot of copies. Uh, people actually still play it, believe it or not. They're online and even offline, there's a, still a lot of people playing it. And it's interesting what the team 
at uh, Evolution Studios did. Even though the game wasn't met, met with the best reception, they just constantly kept on supporting the game uh, through all the bad publicity he was getting. They just kept on supporting it, kept on supporting it, adding content. And, you know, people, there's, a, there's people that really enjoy this game now. Um, like I said, if I wanted to drive, I would just go outside, but we're not going to get into that. Um, they got a little bit more in depth into Horizon Zero Dawn. It was the same area that we saw at E3, but, you know, they got a little bit more in depth into it. Um, no Man's Sky is coming out June 2016. Thing about No Man's Sky is the same way I felt about it when it was announced is the same way I feel about it now. Just indifferent. Don't know what to think about it because they. I feel like they've shown they've shown you a lot, but they haven't shown you anything at the same time. So it, it's so crazy because usually when content is released for a game videos, you can make a verdict off of this. This game has shown so much, and I don't have a verdict. I don't know what to feel about this game. I feel like I can't say the game looks bad, like it looks corny or anything, but I can't say it looks good. I, I don't know what to say about this game because they really haven't shown anything. This might be a scheme to, this is actually pretty smart when you think about it, right? You show, you show just enough content of a game that people can't say it's bad, but you don't show so much that people can say it's good either. So pretty much what they have, pretty much for people who are curious, they just gotta buy it to try it out. Got some slick bastards over there at Hello Games. Real slick. Um, Boundless uh, and Ratchet and Clank. Even though I've never really been a huge fan at Ra of Ratchet and Clank, I always preferred um, other platformers, um, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Jack and Daxter. Always felt like Jack and Daxter and um, other games like that were just way better and, and blew Ratchet and Clank out the water. I mean, I even, I would probably prefer to play Mario or Rayman over Ratchet and Clank. And that's just historically. Um, even when I was a kid and the first one came out, I played it and I'm like, this is not fun. I, I just never enjoyed Ratchet and Clank, never. Uh, and and I've, ga I've given the game a few chances like the previous ones and I just fell asleep. Just It was just boring to me. But I did play it, the, the new one, the reboot at E3, and I gotta say it was decent. Um, I don't know if I'll actually buy the game. I'm not the biggest fan of action adventure platformers anymore. Like I don't see one and get extremely excited. I think that's just something that I gradually uh, grew out of because that's. I think that's. I feel like that's the genre that that most interests you when you're a kid or at at my time period in being a child and gaming was out. That was the type of game you're you were mostly interested. In. But as you gradually got older, more genres. Different other genres uh, just obtained your um, interest more, so I would I would give it a chance. I got to see more uh, with the game, and it also depends when the game comes out. Because if there's a game I want more, and you know they put it uh, right as right alongside Ratchet and Clank, I'm obviously not going to get Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank is a good game. It's one of those games they need to put out where. There's no other games coming out around that time. That's a that's a very early fall game, I believe. That's a September game, even in August, late August. Put put it there, and that's the best chance I believe it has because there's still some fans of it. I I believe that fan base is waning in my opinion, but I believe that game could do really well at the right time. Um, we didn't get to see anything from Sucker Punch. We know they're working on a new game. Um, so they'll probably they're probably saving that for E3. I believe we'll definitely see something from Sucker Punch at E3 uh, I, I do believe Santa Monica is working on a new God of War. I think that's obvious. I believe we'll see that at, at E3 also um, There were a few other projects like uh, what is it? AVC Vector uh, And I believe I mentioned everything else uh, the developer of um, Street Fighter uh, Yoshinori, I believe it is. They, they were just weirdos. I'm sorry, but they were just odd people. Um, but 2016 looks really good for Sony. Um, like I said, with their catalog for 2016, everything is not for everybody. Because it's definitely everything they showed there and everything in 2016 obviously ain't for me. So everything is not for everybody, but there's something for everybody. So that's the great thing we get in variety and diversity in these different PlayStation games, both big projects and smaller ones. So overall, this conference for me wasn't 
I'm amazing and it wasn't great to the right person so a lot of these games appeal to them but for me the games that really interested me uh you know just being generous i would put ratchet and clank on there wild uh uncharted 4 obviously De oh detroit become human i didn't even mention that uh but the main games that interested me wild detroit become human um horizon zero dawn obviously uh and ratchet and clank and that's that's pretty much really it you know slight interest in in rig rigs uh mechanized combat but for the most part those are the games that interest me and of course like i said i told you i'm i'm getting star wars battlefront and and call of duty and everything like that but speaking on detroit become human because y'all know i'm a huge fan of david cage and quantic dreams projects loved heavy rain love um beyond two souls uh <laughs> and i want david cage to show supermassive games how you make an interactive game because David Cage is the king of it. He is the brain behind those get those type of games and he does it and he directs them really well. And uh, if you saw the press conference, you know um, this game is pretty much the continuation of what was her name, Kara, and the uh, the tech demo um that we saw very many years back i don't remember when it came out but it was just it was just real compelling you watched it and it was like man i hope they it, it was like something you wanted to see more of whether they make it into a game or whether they make it into some type of uh you know short series something to watch it just it, it just was real um atmospheric and just like you, my eyes were glued to the screen and if you've never watched it you need to look you need, you need to look it up because it's just real fascinating and interesting and uh, a, a compelling concept almost like that movie uh, that came out I think last year or this year Ex Machina um, some something along the lines of that um, and it's just a real interesting thing and it takes place in Detroit that either means um, they either chose Detroit because it's a real shitty place and It'll be interesting the to see the perspective that a this AI, um, how this AI inter interacts and how they see the world through through being in a city like Detroit, which is kind of shitty. Some places not not getting on anybody who lives in Detroit, but you know uh, Detroit has it's bad. You know some of it's some of it's good, but it's uh, very likely that they also chose Detroit. Um, because it's one of those cities that had several periods of technological boom and you know the whole automotive industry and everything like that a lot of things uh, took place there um, so it'll be interesting seeing how that uh, you know how that world looks and how everything goes in that game so I'm definitely looking forward to that so that's my review let me know what y'all thought about it I'm out of here peace